Good morning. morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Abingdon United Methodist Church. We're very glad you're here. My name is Paul C. I'm blessed to be one of the pastors along with Glenn Patterson to be in ministry with you. As we gather today, um, I want to make sure that you know next Sunday, not today, but next Sunday is our children's Sabbath. We will have children leading in uh, many different aspects of the worship service, and we're really excited uh, about that, to have the kids helping to lead, and they'll be singing, um, and that's, that's going to be a great time. And then there'll be uh, a trip to the pumpkin patch in the afternoon. There's, there's word about this um, in your bulletin. Um, on Wednesday, October 25th, the last Wednesday of the month, we will have, at, le- at least by my count since I've been here, our third annual chili cook-off. Um, this is a great event in the life of our church. Um, it's a good time for fellowship, a good time for fun. There are, um, there are some prizes given for, for, for the chili. Uh, I think there's four different, different categories. And the prize is you get a piece of paper that tells you you got a prize. <laughs> Two years ago, I won the prize for the, for the spiciest chili. Last year, Moises Martinez, who's our youth director, he won for the spiciest chili. I've given him notice this year that this year is a tie-breaking year. And so we, we want you to come and, and try our spicy chili. Not all the chilies will be spicy, but he, he and I will be going for that. So if, if you dare, uh, it's going um, to be a showdown for the spiciest chili. So come, come one, come all. Um, in your bulletin, there is a tab where you can leave prayer requests. Um, also, you can share contact information if you're new to our church or if your contact information has changed recently. Uh, we'd love to be able to keep up with you. Um, and I hope that you find the insert that's in your bulletin that's for a song that we will be singing together uh, during the offertory. We will begin our time together with a few moments for silent prayer and reflection and will be led into worship through our prelude. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of Almighty God.
Our prayer of confession is printed in your bulletin. Together let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our hymn is number 144, This Is My Father's World. I invite you to stand as you were led, and we sing together. Affirmation of faith is printed in your bulletin. We will be sharing in the Apostles' Creed. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father.
Friends, I invite you to take a few moments and share the peace of Christ with those around you. May the peace of Christ be with you all.
A Psalter is found on page 137 in your hymnal. It is the King James Version of the 23rd Psalm, and we will read this in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now I invite the children to the front for children's time with Miss Lindsay. We love that. There's room. There's always room for more. Hi, come in. So have a seat. Sit down. I love it. I love when we have to scooch, scooch, scooch over. Hi. So I'm going to tell you something. That song that I learned, that I sang just now, I learned that song 185 years. No, it wasn't 185 years ago. It was so long ago. When Paul and I were in college together at Emory and Henry College, and we sang that song together in the choir there. And I loved going to Emory and Henry College, but when I first got there, can I tell you the truth? I was really sad. Really sad. I was 17 years old. I was moving away from home. And it was only two hours, but two hours can feel like a really long way when you don't know anybody and you're the, you're the new girl and no, you don't know any familiar faces and you miss your mommy. I miss my mom and I was sad and I was super sad, crying, emotional, thinking about going home, really just thinking about, you know what, am I going to make it? And one day I was walking, one night I was walking across the campus, and you know those memories of things just sort of, you can, you can think of them and they're just right there so fresh, I could remember that like this. This boy came up right behind me. He sort of kicked at my foot and he said, hey you, you look sad. Are you sad? I was like, yeah, of course I'm sad. You see my face here? It's a sad face. I'm sad. And he was like, why are you sad? And I, and I told him a few of those things, and he said, don't be sad. I want to be your friend. Let's just be friends. And I was like, okay. And he goes, can I just walk with you to wherever you're going? I was like, okay, that, that sounds all right. Well, he walked with me, and I felt a little bit better. Well, guess what? The next day, I went to the cafeteria, big cafeteria. I don't know anybody, lots of noise, lots of people it already seem like they've got the best friends in the whole world. And I was kind of feeling that sad thing again. And I saw him. His name is Oliver, by the way. I saw Oliver, and he goes, hey, 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 you sad girl, come here. <laughs> come over here. He, he said, do you want to sit with us? And it looked like they were full. And I was like, well, you're full. He's like, no, scoot. There's room. Come sit with us. And I did. And, and I felt better. And that day, I made a really good friend. And from that time forward, I started thinking, that's not so bad here. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a chance. And then I met all kinds of great people and had all kinds of good experiences and felt really loved. And what I was telling you that for, have you ever... Remember the time when someone walked with you when you were sad or included you, made room for you at a table when they were sitting and it seemed full? Or they were playing a game and maybe they saw you kind of by yourself and they were like, come play with us. It feels nice, doesn't it, to be included 
It feels nice to be made a way for. God makes that way for us every day. God is walking with us. God is with us through our sadness, through our happiness. He's making a table for us. And you know what's cool about that? We get to be that for somebody. We get to, we get to say to somebody, there's room for you. Come sit with us. We get to say, I'll walk with you. If you're sad, I'll walk with you. You know, that's what God wants us to do. You think you can put that in your, in your thinkers and, and think about how you can do that this week, how you can include people, make someone feel loved? Yeah. Today we're going to do something that's, that's helping. When we go down for children's church, we're going to help pack emergency food bags for people who might come by the church who are experiencing food insecurities and need a little help. You guys are going to come down there, and we're going to get busy working on that. Is that a deal? Busy food orders, that's right. Can we have a bow our heads and have a quick prayer? All right. Gracious God, we're thankful for all the people you've put in our lives who have made a way for us, who have walked with us, and who have made us feel less lonely or less sad. And we're thankful that you are that for us, for us. And we ask that you would help us to be a friend to others and to make way and make space for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Lily, why don't you lead the way? We'll be going downstairs to the Abbey. Parents, you can find us at the bottom of the stairs after church. You can follow them, okay? Would you join me in the prayer for illumination printed in the bulletin? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from John's account of the good news of Jesus Christ in the 10th chapter, beginning in the 11th verse. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And now, as you are able and feel led, I invite you to honor our risen Lord by standing for the reading of the Gospel. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as my father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And please be seated. Let us pray. May the words in my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you feel led and you know all or some of the words, I invite you to join me in saying them again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And if you don't have all the words memorized or any of the words memorized, that is okay. Um, I had a head start on you. I had a 45-year head start on you. So I've been saying that since I could talk. 
I remember not long after Kathleen and I got married, we decided that it was time to start to do a few things a little more like real grown-ups do. We were in our late 20s after all, it was time. And so one of the things that we needed to do was we had to get life insurance. And we called an agent that Kathleen's family had worked with before and we got uh, some paperwork filled out, we got arrangements made. And then I find out that there's a representative from the insurance agency, or somebody who contracts with them, who's gonna come to my office for a visit. What's the purpose of this visit? Well, it's, it's, it's a medical thing. What does that mean? Well, there's just some, some basic stuff we need to take care of. They mentioned, um, you know, blood pressure, this and that, uh, blood, wait, what? They needed to come to my office and take my blood? What you don't know, what Kathleen knew, but I didn't want to talk about very much, was that especially in my younger years, I'm better, I'm better now, but in my younger years, I had a terrible fear of needles. I'm just, I mean, just going to put it out there. You make fun of me all you want, but I had a terrible fear of needles. It was involuntary. They could tell me whatever they wanted to tell me, but when, when I got a shot, when I got blood drawn, even the, the little prick of the, the tip of the finger, I'd, I'd get woozy and lightheaded. I know, I know, you, you, you can make, but it was involuntary. I don't know what it comes from, but I do know that when I was really small, no kid likes shots, and I was told that I needed to have a shot, and so I went um, immediately and I hid under the chair that my mother was sitting in in the exam room. And when the doctor and the nurse came in, I wouldn't come out, come on out, Paul, mm -mm. come on out, Paul, mm -mm. my mother stands up, the doctor says, come on, Paul, we'll give you candy, mm -mm. got candy at home, mm -mm. no. <laughs> Finally, the nurse who had, let's just say she had seen a few more sunrises than my parents together, combined age, she reached down and she grabbed my arm and she picked me up and the chair all together and she shook me until the chair rattled on the floor <laughs> and she put me on the exam table and they gave me the shot and she looked at me and she said, this is good for you. <laughs> I think that might have had something to do with it. So there we are in my office. And I've tried my best to get out of it. No, today's the day. And, and oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh, you're doing well. They, they, put, they put the needle in my arm. You're doing really well. I found out later that I turned as white as the robe that I'm wearing now. And I was, I was just about to fall over when the blood test ended. And Kathleen and I thought, wow, I married a manly man, didn't I? <laughs> we've, we've talked about that and joked about that a lot. Very recently, we had to talk to our insurance agent again, because almost 20 years later, it's time to look again at our life insurance for the next 20, 30 years. And my perspective is a little bit different. Previously, the only thing that I worried about associated with all that was having blood drawn and passing out. Now, in my mid-40s, Death is more than just a hypothetical possibility. I've lost people close to me. I've seen people my age alive one day, gone the next. I'm talking to people in this room who've experienced loss very recently. Death has touched everyone in this room at some point or another. And we're all haunted by death. We're all afraid of death on some level. Now, I'll, I'll talk to people who've lived a long life, and they'll say, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm at peace. But, but every now and then, they'll also whisper to me, but I'm a little bit nervous. And even when they won't say that, even when they won't say that, the people that love them the most are saying... We know that, they, that they've lived a good life. We know that they've made their peace with God, but we don't want to lose them. I lost my grandfather uh, over 10 years ago. He lived to be 92. He lived a full life. But man, I miss him. I miss him. Aren't you glad you came to church today? <laughs> Psalm 23 says, 
Yea, though I walk through what? The valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We talked on Wednesday night about a valley. Have you ever seen a valley? Have you ever seen a ravine? What do we know about a valley? The sun shines some places and not others. Have you ever, in the, the winter or the spring, when there's been a frost, you've seen the frost everywhere, and then the sun comes out and the frost goes away everywhere except where? In the valley, in the ravine. Why? Because the sun doesn't hit it in the same way. And the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, of death. That shadow is a permanent fixture. It's always there. It's always there. Notice that it doesn't say, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but what is it really saying? When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because it's there. And as individuals, in all different kinds of ways, we, we run. We deny, we make a little bit of peace with death, but it's there. It's the valley of the shadow. This has been a hard week. This has been a hard week because the headlines keep coming about war, about the loss of innocent life, about children being killed, being taken hostage, I'm not a political pundit. I'm not going to offer you uh, insightful analysis of the conflict between Israel and Hamas, the war in Gaza. But I am going to say I know that God mourns whenever children die, no matter where they call home. And this is a heartbreaking situation. And I know God must mourn. I know that I mourn. I know that Collectively, we have to mourn because we say, my goodness, we've come so far, we've come so far. And yet the farther we've come, it seems like the more sophisticated we get at killing each other. And the whole world is on edge, watching, waiting. Is this going to escalate? What's going to happen in the valley of the shadow of death? And so I would remind you, the psalmist says, not if, but when we're in the sh shadow of death. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. For thou art with me. And we're holding on to that promise today that even in this dark valley, that God is with us. I really came to tell you about two words today. Just like last week, we looked at one commandment to see if it would illumine the other nine. There's two words at the end of the 23rd Psalm that I think help us understand the whole thing. And maybe you remember, surely what? Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. That word goodness comes from a Hebrew word for good. The, the word is tov, T-O-V. That's what it transliterates to. You ever hear somebody say mazel tov? That's a congratulations or a, or a, or a blessing in Jewish culture. T-O-V, mazel tov, tov good. The scholar Scott McKnight tells us that that word tov, good, appears in the Old Testament 700 times at least. I think we should pay attention. And it's, it's there right in the opening pages. Do you remember the story in Genesis 1 of creation? God creates everything. He creates light. He creates land. He creates the sea. He creates the fish. He creates the birds of the air, the animals on the land, and people. And after each one, do you remember what God says? It is what? Good. It is tov. God saw that it was good. And on the seventh day, on the Sabbath, God rested. And he looked at his creation and said, it is very good. Me'od tov. It is good. It is very good. Good is, good is a word that's about the character of God. It's the very heart of God to be good. It's, Psalm 119 says... To God, you are good and you do good. It's God's character. It's God act, God's action. God is good. God is goodness. I remember a few years ago, I used to hear very often people would say, God is good. And then people would respond by saying what? All the time. And then you'd say all the time. And people would say what? 
God is good. That used to be a common, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. It's true. It's true, it's biblical. But I worry, I worry that we may have gotten a little bit bit shallow in how we used that affirmation, God is good. We seem to sometimes always use it when it benefits us. God is good, I got my parking space. God is good, my team kicked a field goal. Well, sure, give thanks for those things, but there's more to the affirmation that God is good than you winning. God is good is more than things are going well for me. There's something much, much deeper. God is good when it's very dark. God is good when times are very rough. And sometimes we question God's, is God good? Is God good? And we wish that God would make all of the evil just go away, that he just banish all evil, that it would be light all the time, that there would be no darkness. But there's darkness. And again, so I remind you, the valley of the shadow of death doesn't go away, but even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. God is there. There is darkness, but I read somewhere in in John's gospel that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. That word mercy is another Hebrew word, another really important word throughout the Old Testament. It's hesed, H-E-S-E-D. The the Old Testament scholar Ellen Davis tells me that you should pronounce it hesed, like with a ch in the back, but it's flu season, so don't do that. But... um, Hesed can be translated mercy. It can be translated steadfast love. It can be translated loving kindness. And it can be translated faithfulness. God's mercy is God's faithfulness. He's faithful to Adam and Eve after they leave the garden. He's faithful to Cain after he takes his brother's life. He's faithful to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is faithful to his people and frees them from Egypt. When they go into exile, when they're ripped out of their homeland... And the temple is destroyed. And they're far, far away from home. They discover that God is there too faithful. In the fullness of time, God comes in Jesus. John John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh. That's God's goodness and mercy became flesh and lived among us. Walks with us and talks with us. Shows us how to live and how to love. Faithful all the way to the cross. Faithful all the way to Easter Sunday morning. Faithful, stronger than death, faithful. God's goodness and God's mercy, God's tov and God's chesed. One more word, one more word. God's goodness and mercy, surely goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me. The scholars tell us that that word follow is not strong enough. That it really should be translated pursue. God's goodness and mercy, God's tov and God's hesed pursue us. God God is coming after us. God is relentlessly seeking us. It's a difficult time. It's a dark time. I don't know what's going on in everybody's life, but everybody has challenges, and we know for sure that the country that we live in and the world that we live in is facing immense challenges, and it's all true. It's all very difficult. But I want you to know that there's a deeper truth that the truest thing that I can say to you today is not that these are dark times. The truest thing that I can say to you is God's goodness and mercy are pursuing you, are pursuing each and every one of us. And God is not going to give up on us. As a grandfather came to see me at a a previous church, he said, you know, we have our grandson uh, four or five nights a week And we've been trying to teach him to say his bedtime prayers and his table blessing. And so for the table blessing, we didn't know what else to teach him except God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for him. And so he said, we're we're doing that. And we taught him to say, "Now, now you say it. And so he folds his hands and he says, God is great. God is God. And he said, Pastor, I don't want to correct him. God is great. God is God. I said, don't you dare correct him. God is great. God is good. But God is God. God is God. And thank God we are not. (laughs) 
May you know today that you were pursued and you were loved by a God of goodness and mercy and that God is God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our ushers come to receive our morning offering, I invite you to take the insert that's in your bulletin for the hymn, My Shepherd, You Supply My Need. The choir will sing the first two verses. Is that right? The choir will sing the first two verses, and then you as a congregation are invited to join on the third verse. Together with thanksgiving in our hearts, let us give our gifts to Almighty God.
with thanksgiving in our hearts, let us pray as Jesus teaches his disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 381, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of our living and loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.